the Onikatana Ryobasaurs by Nakaya are some of our favourite tools in the shop. And if I could only save five tools from a raging inferno, probably two of them would be hanging on this saw rack right here. They are available in three different sizes, the 210mm, the 240mm and the 270mm. All of these sizes have a few things in common. One is that the saw blade itself is scraped down the length of the plate. What that means is that here at the neck, you get a good amount of material and a nice, stiff, reinforced neck that gives you a lot of confidence and then a very fine plate that allows you to take quite nice cuts. That scraping also gives you a thinner plate here in the middle of the blade uh, compared to the thickness of the plate out at the teeth, which means you get less friction in the cut and a really nice smooth action. The teeth are really beautifully filed. These teeth are not impulse hardened, they can be resharpened and they are designed to be resharpened. Unfortunately, I don't have the skills to resharpen one of these saws nicely. However, I'd really love to learn. If you want to replace this blade, we do sell replacement blades for the Oni Katanas, so they can be kept running without resharpening the teeth. However, if you're feeling game, you can also have a go at resharpening these saws. Having said that, I was speaking last night to a professional carpenter who picked one of these up in our class 18 months ago, and it has still been going strong until very recently. Uh, and it's outperformed every other single one of his saws that he owns. So, really beautiful cuts, really nice smooth finishes, really effortless action. How do you distinguish between the three sizes? So, I will be the first to admit that I completely underestimated the 270mm Ryoba early on in my time at JTA. The 270mm Ryoba has very, very big teeth. Japanese saws determine their tooth sizing with the size of their plate. So, if you're looking to do bigger cuts and need bigger teeth, you go for a bigger saw plate. The 270mm I found was that was a little bit too heavy for my furniture and box scale work. However, at the start of this year, we ran our tea house class with Greg and Yor from Fujimoto Traditional Carpentry Company, and the 270mm did all of that work. Every student was given one of these, every student did their tenons with one of these, and it gave excellent results to students from a huge variety of experience levels uh, and professional backgrounds. So, Still very accessible, but perfect for large timber, 100 on 100, 120 on 120, those sorts of large cross sections that you would see in Japanese carpentry. The 240 and 210 are a little harder to distinguish because they both work excellently in a huge range of applications. Generally, if you've got longer rip cuts to make, I would say that the 240 will be your friend, simply because you get three centimeters extra on the plate, which gives you a little bit more room to swing and a little bit faster result. However, that result is still quick and the cut is still excellent. The 210mm gets a little bit finer and a little bit tighter, a little bit thinner and a little bit slower. However, if you need a saw that can do docking and dimensioning work on small sections and also be pressed into use on some joinery, the 210mm is a great addition and very, very versatile. It can do a lot of those roles, especially if you don't own a spined saw at this point. So, that's my two cents on the Onikatanas. I hope that you enjoy them as much as we do.